transformation through education. Those are the words used by the Chinese Communist Party to describe the internment camps that house hundreds of thousands of Uyghurs scattered across the Xinjiang Autonomous Region. An increasing number of Western governments have declared China's treatment of the Uyghur people a genocide. Leaked documents reveal a system of forced labor, forced abortions, and forced ideological indoctrination. What is really going on in these camps? Is it really a genocide? Are we funding it? And what can we do to stop it? All that in this video. Due to the sensitive nature of this topic, this video will be demonetized. So consider becoming a Patreon to keep this content going. The New Frontier To understand the situation, we have to understand the motivations of the Chinese government. China is a vast country where the Han people form a 91% majority. But the region of Xinjiang, which means New Frontier, in the sparsely populated west of China, has primarily been inhabited by the Uyghur people, a Turkic Muslim ethnic group. As late as 1949, Xinjiang was 75% Uyghur and 6% Han. Today, it's just 45% Uyghur and 40% Han, primarily due to the mass resettlement of Han Chinese to the region. The presence of a large ethnic minority means that China fears the rise of separatist tendencies in the region, specifically because of its strategic value. Xinjiang contains 40% of the nation's coal reserves, 23% of the natural gas, 22% of the oil, and an enormous potential for wind and solar energy as well as 84% of China's cotton. And besides the natural resources, Xinjiang is also strategically located. China's Belt and Road Initiative involves a series of infrastructure and transport projects that links China to the rest of the world. These transport links go through Xinjiang, making Xinjiang China's gate to Central Asia. So China has to maintain control over Xinjiang even if the people living there don't agree. For a long time, ethnic tensions remained below the surface in Xinjiang. But as China's rapid economic development reached this region, most of the best jobs and most of the benefits of economic development went to Han Chinese settlers rather than indigenous Uyghurs. This ethnic inequality created a recipe for ethnic resentment. This, coupled with increasing restrictions on religion in the 1990s, led to periodic outbreaks of social unrest, which were brutally put down. But it was in 2009 when things really blew up. The government's failure to prosecute Han Chinese workers who had killed Uyghur factory workers led to a wave of protests against what was perceived as ethnic discrimination. Ethnic tensions between Uyghurs and Han Chinese in Xinjiang boiled over into riots, which led to the deaths of 39 people. But things got worse. In 2014, when President Xi Jinping visited Xinjiang, there were several genuine terrorist attacks, including a suicide bombing and knife attacks that killed dozens of people. These attacks were committed by separatist and radical Islamic extremist groups. This led to a vicious response from the Chinese government, with President Xi Jinping calling on officials in a secret speech to, quote, unleash the tools of dictatorship. A genocide in the making. In response to the unrest, Xi Jinping declared a people's war on terror and initiated what was called a de-extremification program to fight radicalization using transformation through education. What followed was an order by the newly appointed governor of Xinjiang to, quote, round up anyone who should be rounded up. What this meant in practice was that anyone who showed any signs of extremist behavior was rounded up. But what the Chinese government considers extremist includes any outward signs of religious behavior, including people with long beards, people who don't drink alcohol, people who wore hijabs, and anyone born after the 1980s. Any of these characteristics, none of them crimes, 
were criteria that could be used to put people into re-education camps, allegedly to stop them from being radicalized and to teach them job skills and how to be law-abiding citizens. Well, it turns out that an estimated one million people are being held in these camps without trial. These camps are surrounded by barbed wire and watchtowers, and leaked documents reveal strict instructions not to let anyone escape. These are not re-education camps. These are internment camps. In addition to these extrajudicial detentions, regular prison sentences have surged since 2016, with a total of 250,000 imprisoned through formal legal channels. A combination of leaked documents and eyewitness accounts reveal that the aim of these camps is to brainwash people, to make them forget about being Uyghur or being Muslim and make them loyal to the Chinese Communist Party. People in these camps have been exposed to unsanitary conditions, malnutrition, withheld medical care, beatings and rape. Essentially, China has imprisoned a million people one in 12 Uyghurs without trial because of a few terrorist attacks by people who happen to be the same ethnicity and religion. This is collective punishment, punishing an entire race for the crimes of a few individuals. But it doesn't stop there. While a million people have been thrown in jail because of their culture, the Chinese government is trying to keep their families in the dark. Leaked documents reveal instructions to local officials on what to tell Uyghur students who study in other parts of China when they get home and discover that their parents have been locked up. These students are told that their parents are just in a training facility, but that they can't leave, and as long as they behave, their parents will be released. In fact, when students would ask if their parents had committed a crime, Chinese officials were told to say no but that their thinking had been infected by unhealthy thoughts. So even the Chinese government itself acknowledges that the people it has locked up haven't actually committed any crime. The only crime they have committed is thought crime. And it's clear that China sees the cultural distinctiveness of the Uyghur people as a threat in itself. Outside of the camps, the CCP has engaged in a campaign of cultural destruction. 35% of mosques have been demolished, and a further 30% have been damaged or altered in some way. 30% of important Islamic cultural sites, like sacred shrines, cemeteries, and pilgrimage routes, have been demolished since 2017, with another 28% damaged or altered in some way. This is a photo of the pilgrimage site of Ordam Mazar in 2011. This is that same site in 2018. Total cultural destruction. Chinese officials want to purge the culture of any elements that are not deemed Chinese enough, with mosques being forced to replace Islamic architectural designs with traditional Chinese elements. The first step toward genocide is erasing a group's cultural heritage, burning their books, destroying their cultural artifacts. Because once you have eliminated those, it's easier to claim that they were never there. In addition to these tactics, the children of people who have been locked up are being put into special orphanages and boarding schools where they are being taught to forget about their culture and become Han Chinese instead. At the same time, China is offering land, jobs, and economic subsidies to attract more Han Chinese settlers to Xinjiang. In a province of 23 million people, 11 million of them Uyghur, an additional 2 million Han Chinese have settled in Xinjiang between 2015 and 2018 alone. It's clear that the aim of the Chinese Communist Party is the cultural destruction of the Uyghur people. But do these actions constitute a genocide? Forced sterilization. The actions described thus far can generally be labeled as war crimes, crimes against humanity, and even cultural genocide. But the UN definition of genocide is very specific. 
A genocide is any of the following actions committed with intent to destroy, in whole or in part, a national, ethnical, racial, or religious group. Killing members of the group, causing serious bodily or mental harm, creating conditions calculated to bring about their destruction, preventing births within the group, and forcibly transferring children from one group to another. New evidence has revealed actions that meet this definition. Until recently, China had a one-child policy. However, for ethnic minorities, this was a two-child policy and even three children in the rural area. But when China lifted its one-child policy to become a two-child policy, it also moved to equalize the policy for Han and minority. So two children for everyone and no minority exemption. On the surface, this seems like a move toward equality. But the reality is very different. In 2017, China tripled the fines for violating the two-child policy to three times the average disposable income in Xinjiang. While the fines apply to all ethnicities, in practice, only Uyghurs are detained to internment camps if they can't afford to pay, which usually they can't. In these internment camps, hundreds of thousands of Uyghur women have been subjected to mandatory pregnancy checks forced insertion of IUDs to prevent pregnancy, forced abortions, and forced sterilizations. While these policies have been implemented for decades to enforce the one-child policy, the situation in Xinjiang is suspiciously different. Even as forced abortions, IUDs, and sterilization declined massively in the rest of China, they rose sharply in Xinjiang. IUD insertions increased from 200,000 to 330,000 between 2014 and 2018. So much so that by 2018, 80% of IUD insertions in China were in Xinjiang alone, despite it being 1.8% of the population. While sterilization rates plunged in the rest of the country, they surged sevenfold in Xinjiang from 2016 to 2018 to more than 60,000 sterilizations. The result of these policies? A 60% decline in birth rates in Uyghur majority areas of Xinjiang between 2015 and 2018. Far greater than the rest of China and even the rest of Xinjiang. Keep in mind, these policies are not being applied equally to all ethnicities. And these policies are being implemented on a mass scale. The Uyghur majority city of Hotan budgeted for 14,000 sterilizations in 2019. That's over 34% of all married women of childbearing age in the city. What the Chinese government is doing is a deliberate attempt to specifically reduce Uyghur birth rates to make it easier to assimilate them and increase their control over the region. This policy falls under the category of imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group. The large-scale transfer of Uyghur children to orphanages and boarding schools as a means of erasing their culture could fall under forcibly transferring children from one group to another, and the physical and psychological torture of the internment camps could fall under causing serious bodily or mental harm. As we speak, there are no mass killings in Xinjiang, not yet. But every indication shows that the government is moving closer and closer to genocide. While the physical destruction of the Uyghur people hasn't started yet, it's clear that the aim of the Chinese government is the total eradication of the Uyghur culture. Whether it achieves this through so-called re-education or through forced sterilization is irrelevant. So what can we do to stop it? The horrific scale of China's persecution of the Uyghur people calls for strong action. But a military intervention would be impossible. China is a nuclear-armed state, and no country would risk a nuclear holocaust. That leaves only diplomatic and economic tools. Sanctions against Iraq reduced the economy by 50% and caused widespread suffering, but they had no impact on Saddam Hussein. With a few notable exceptions, sanctions don't work. It's not that we shouldn't do sanctions against China, but we should do them with the understanding that they are purely symbolic 
and won't do anything to change China's mistreatment of the Uyghur people. You see, China has two top priorities, its own internal sovereignty and loyalty to the Chinese Communist Party. It sees its actions in Xinjiang as creating loyalty to the CCP, and any action by a foreign country to stop it is seen as an attack on its sovereignty. Whatever minor economic pain sanctions might cause, China cares far more about these two things. On top of that, China is so interlinked with the global economy that no country is willing to undermine its own economic and trade relations to save the Uyghur people. But there is one area where we can and should take action. Whether you know it or not, you and I are funding this persecution. Xinjiang produces 20% of the world's cotton. Uyghurs who have been released from the internment camps are being subjected to forced labor to produce cotton and other products. And it's not just in Xinjiang. 80,000 Uyghurs have been transported to factories across China where they are forced to work on production lines linked to at least 83 major brands with a limited freedom of movement, living in segregated dormitories, undergoing ideological brainwashing and being forbidden from participating in religious practice. There are even adverts on Chinese internet offering batches of Uyghurs to work in the factory. The supply chains of major brands like Apple, Adidas and Nike are all involved in using the forced labor of Uyghurs. Even the solar panels made in China that we need for the energy transition are likely to make use of forced labor. So one way or another, you and I are funding this program of persecution. It's time that we boycott these products, force companies to remove forced labor from their supply chains and put pressure on our governments to ban all products that use Uyghur forced labor. Blockchain technology, the same technology behind Bitcoin, can be used to track cotton that uses forced labor. We should utilize this technology to clean up our supply chains. On top of that, while there is no stopping the campaign as a whole, there is evidence that media exposure of individual cases has helped certain individuals to be released from internment camps. But ultimately, this issue raises a wider question. If we are so dependent on China that we are literally funding what increasingly looks like a genocide, perhaps we should begin to question our trade dependence. China is no longer the cheapest place to do manufacturing. We should begin to consider disinvesting from China. And while China doesn't care about human rights, the EU does still have the largest single market in the world so it can condition trade deals and access to its market on human rights in China. Boycotting the 2022 Winter Olympics in China could also be a reputational blow to the Chinese Communist Party. Yet outside the Western world, few governments have condemned the persecution of the Uyghur people. While Islamic countries are vocal about oppression in Palestine and Kashmir, they are silent about Xinjiang because countries like Pakistan have business ties with China, which only shows their hypocrisy. These governments only care about Muslims in other countries when it doesn't hurt their wallets. Geopolitics is more important than religion. The situation in Xinjiang is dire. Forced cultural destruction, mass internment, crimes against humanity. The Chinese Communist Party is preparing for genocide. After the Holocaust, we said never again. Don't allow it to happen this time. Is China going to invade Taiwan? Find out in this video. Leave a comment for the algorithm. Thank you to my Patreons, including Linda, Richard, Eisenskjold, Ryan, and many more for making this video possible. Like, share, and subscribe. Because this was my take.